Welcome back. As promised from the sidelines of the Motilal Oswal 20th Annual Global Investor Conference, we now have with us Gautam Dugar, Head of Research Institutional Equities, Ajay Menon, MD and CEO of Broking and Distribution, and Ashish Shankar, MD and CEO of Motilal Oswal Private Wealth. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, you know, you all have been in discussion with more than 200 corporates. There have been more than 15,000 one-on-one -one meetings spread over the last two days and today, of course. And a lot big, the attendance has been with marquee corporates, HDFC Bank, Hero, Godrej Consumer, Mankind, Trent. The list is endless. So, Gautam, let me start this discussion with you. Conventional wisdom tell us that market returns track earnings growth. Now, Q1 has been muted. And I think in your note you highlighted the biggest disappointment was the beat to miss ratio. The earnings upgrades to downgrade ratio was just 0.4x, which is the worst that we've seen in close to about three years. Is that concerning to you? And what was the feedback from the corporates with respect to earnings growth for the remainder of the year? Hi, Rima. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So, yes, the earnings season began on a slightly muted note, uh, or rather the year began on a muted note, but it was still in line with expectations. We were expecting that. Yes, of course, the bread could have been slightly better, and maybe the small cap earnings uh, were slightly more disappointing. But as far as the full year is concerned, we are still quite confident that we should clock 10 to 12 percent earnings growth this year, uh, which, depending on where you come from, looks either very moderate or reasonably okay, given that this 12% will come on a base of 30% earnings growth of last year and on a base of four-year CAGR of 20% earnings growth between FY20 to FY24. I mean, the scale of earnings have gone up significantly, Rima. Uh, four years back, the Nifty total profits were 3.5 lakh crore. Our coverage universe, 300 companies' profit was 4.3 lakh crore. Today, that number is 11 lakh crore for our coverage universe and roughly 8 lakh crore for Nifty. So, yes, this quarter began on a slightly muted note, but from here we expect things to pick up. The next three quarters we are expecting growth at about 5, 15 and 18 percent. That is how the entire year's growth aggregates to about 11 percent. Coming to the second part of your question uh, as to what the corporates have been saying, yesterday we had eight CEO tracks and uh, since morning today we have already into the second CEO track. The outlook remains quite strong. Uh, we've had corporates representing financials, consumption, uh, manufacturing, and even commodity uh, in the CEO tracks which have already happened so far. So growth outlook look quite decent at the macro front. Uh, the hurting thing is that the rural seems to be picking up. That is the common feedback that we are hearing from multiple corporates, those who presented in the CEO tracks, as well as the ones who are attending the corporate meetings. So rural seems to be picking up after a long, long time, almost three years. So that is a very positive sign. The private capex also is taking a baby step now. Our government has done its heavy lifting, and it looks like in the next 12 to 18 months, you will see private capex uh, taking bigger shape now. So those are two very important takeaways coming in from our uh, CEO tracks and corporate conversations so far in the day one and day two. It, uh, Gautam, very helpful there. So the pickup in rural and private capex, right? Before I head to uh, you know our other two speakers on the panel, I just wanted to complete this uh, discussion with you, Gautam. Uh, this is Sonia here. You know, one growing trend that we're seeing in India right now, which continues, is urbanization, right? I mean, as of last year, one third of India's population now lives in cities. And because of that, we are seeing themes like real estate, whether it's, uh, you know, home building. Today, this whole cables and wires theme is doing very well. Uh, in your discussion with corporates, is this a big theme that people are speaking about? And if yes, how does one play this theme now? Absolutely, Sonia. This has been a big theme unfolding since last three years. And the best way to play this theme is direct, uh, rather than taking first or second order uh, route. So the direct theme is real estate. We are having a Godrej Property CEO session today, uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, we've had a huge overweight on real estate for last three years now. If you look at the numbers, numbers are staggering. You know, the pre-sales have gone up 4x in the last three years. The cumulative pre-sales CAGR of the coverage universe of real estate stock that we track has been upwards of 30%. And even on that high base, the next two, three years, we're expecting 25 to 30% CAGR. So if you have a slightly higher risk appetite, the direct way to play this theme is to take exposure to real estate stock. They've had a phenomenal run-up in the last two years, so maybe there could be some pull-off here or there. But the trajectory looks very solid to me. We are still in the early part of the middle of the cycle. Uh, this cycle, I think, can last another three, four years. 
uh, the absorption rates in the top cities, seven cities are going up. And then, you know, moving forward, you can take exposure to consumer durables, cables and wires, as you mentioned, where we have, uh, you know, KEI in our model portfolio. Uh, and then there are a host of other uh, names which are adjacent uh, to that theme, uh, you know, something like ceramics, uh, you know, the broad consumer discretionary pocket. But the best way to play such theme is to take a direct exposure, uh, which is where we have a big overweight on real estate stocks. Mm. Uh, Ajay, uh, I, you know, when at the beginning of the conference, we were chatting with Ramdev Agarwalji and he said he wants to gauge the FI view, uh, the stance in India post the elections or are high valuations still going to keep them away? Uh, what was your feedback when you chatted with the uh, foreign institutional investors? So I think, uh, as we all know, that the overall uh, market in this last two, three years has been led by the retail boom and the flow of money which is there. And that is what has been the uh, uh, very strong uh, markets which we have seen due to the flows coming from the uh, overall retail participation. But I think uh, when we talk to the FIs and all, they are just waiting for opportunities to come in. That's what we can understand. And uh, I think overall, the India story is just here to be. We have got a stable government in place. We are also uh, looking at the macros, which are very much uh, uh, well in place for India. So looking at the overall global scenario, what we are facing today, and compare that to India, when we talk to the FIs, there is surely a lot of positive momentum to come to India. Now, question is the valuations. Surely, uh, India is a little more at a premium currently. But I think the, at the right opportunity, there is more money to come in. Uh, and along with that, the retail flow is continuing. So the story continues. That's what we feel. But surely, uh, short corrections are good to start investing again. Okay. Ashish Shankar, uh, coming to you, you know, uh, of course, the next big event that everyone's going to watch out for is the September Fed meeting. And the expectation is that there'll be, it'll be the start of the rate cutting cycle. Uh, if and when that happens, what does this really mean for a market like India? Do you think that good news has been priced in, the fact that more money flow comes into a market like India? How does one read into it? And what's the assessment from, you know, a lot of the investors or stakeholders that you have spoken to at your conference? Yeah, hi, Sonia. Hi, Rima. Really exciting to be speaking to you on the sidelines of our uh, Global Investor Conference. Uh, so I think, uh, see, the big shift in this bull market is the color of money, right? Uh, if I look at the past cycles, we would always try and uh, uh, think as to what the FIs will do because they were a formidable force in markets. But no longer. I think the big shift is the emergence of HNIs, ultra HNIs, and family offices. In fact, even uh, in the conference that we are attending, we are seeing a huge number of family office investors, ultra HNIs, attending this conference and talking to companies. So what is happening is that every time FIs are selling, the retail investors, I mean, Ajay just spoke about, I mean, they are becoming a formidable force because you see the number of DMAD accounts, the pace is not abating. I mean, you're still adding 40, 42 lakh DMAD accounts every month. Similarly, if you look at the emergence of HNIs and ultra HNIs, there are about 40,000 ultra HNIs households in the country. There are about 2 lakh uh, HNIs. And if you go further down the curve, the number just goes up. 10x. So uh, whilst, you know, there are these uh, events on the anvil, I mean, Fed is definitely a big event and I think the Fed has become much softer from six months back. So there is a clear expectation that before the elections are announced, there should be a policy rate cut. Uh, however, uh, I can tell you that at every dip, there, are enough, there is enough liquidity on the sidelines, which is waiting to come in from HNIs and ultra HNIs. We saw it just yesterday where FIs were uh, net sellers, and it was a typical day in Indian markets where FIs were net sellers, but you saw that HNIs and uh, ultra HNIs, as well as retail, were net buyers. I don't see this uh, trend uh, abating. So uh, whilst, uh, you know, uh, rate cuts, etc., will definitely give a slight uh, booster to the sentiment, uh, but having said that, uh, I feel that there is enough liquidity on the sidelines to come in at any dip uh, that, that happens uh, in the near future. Uh, gentlemen, uh, do stay on. Ajay Gautam and Ashish, we want to slip into a very short break, but we've got more questions for you, so we'd like to continue the discussion on the other side.
Welcome back. Uh, we are in conversation with the management at Motilal Oswal. It's a part of the Motilal Oswal uh, 20th Annual Global Investor Conference. And we're getting many insights into what investors, stakeholders, corporates are thinking about. Uh, Gautam Dugar, Ajay Menon and Ashish Shankar are still with us. Gentlemen, thank you for you know taking the time out, precious time from your conference. Uh, Gautam, you spoke about many themes, right? Whether it's the pickup in rural, whether it's real estate, whether it's urbanization, a private capex. Anything else that stands out for you which could be a big theme of the rest of 2024? So, Sonia, I think uh, uh, within the broader umbrella of financialization of savings, we are particularly very excited about the whole capital market architecture, which encompasses so many sub, uh, different subsectors. You know, your broking, wealth management, AMCs, the capital market infra firms, because as Ashish was mentioning a couple of minutes back, uh, the DMAT accounts have gone up from 3.5 crore in March 20 to almost touching 17 crores now. And we feel that even if the momentum were to subside a little bit, we're still on our journey to track uh, at least 25, 30 crores DMAT account in the next two, three years. Uh, you must have read that in the month of July alone, uh, 54 lakh folios were created in the mutual fund industry. Uh, SIP amount everyone is familiar with, whether on a gross or a net basis. So clearly this is a theme which can multiply many fold. Already it is doing very well in the last 12, 18 months, but I think we are still scratching the surface over here. And the second thing which I just want to mention is on the consumer discretionary side. You know, 10 years back, consumption was very limited to FMCG and retail. Today, when you look at the consumption canvas, it is expanded significantly. You have hotels, apparel, jewelry, QSR, footwear, and I think many more interesting companies will be listed here. Today we began our track with a very interesting and insightful presentation by the Zefto founder. So I think as uh, you know, the days pass, the opportunity to benefit uh, from this increase in disposable consumption in India, uh, it's going to present several opportunities and the traditional way of playing that team has changed significantly. Who would have thought two years back that trend can become a two lakh crore market cap company? Or for that matter companies like Zomato, Varun Beverages. So we remain quite excited uh, at Mutla Luswal about this evergreen consumption theme and within that the consumer discretionary part. So these are two things uh, I just wanted to highlight. Any red flags from your corporate conversation? Uh, so far none, Sonia, but you know the red flags are always the ones which you are not aware about. Because the market always corrects more on events which you cannot forecast. You know, you go back to 2007, 2013, 2017, 18, ILFS, and then COVID. So I think a big durable correction, which has not actually happened in the last 15 years in this market post the, uh, you know, the global financial crisis. But any uh, correction, which is an order of magnitude more than 10%, as typically happen in India on events which are not forecastable. The usual rate flags are always around, you know, the corporate earnings slow down, crude prices shooting up, in a world which we are living in where every week there is some geopolitical crisis but market discounts those crises very fast because they are known things. The market typically corrects more on things which are unknown and which cannot be forecasted. So that's what I think will be the biggest red flag. Something which we don't know because market valuations are very rich now. Nifty reasonable at 2021 20, times but mid caps and small cap absolutely expensive. Trading at 60-70% premium uh, something like mid cap index trading at 35p in itself uh, is a you know it's 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 been no man's land for some time now. Uh, trading at a premium of 75% to Nifty, I don't think uh, in the past when this has happened. So clearly the risks are many uh, given the valuations that you are negotiating with in the broader market. Nifty is still very reasonable. Uh, Ashish, uh, I wanted to come you know, to you on a point that Ajay was making a while back about how retail money has been flowing into this market in a big way, right? I mean, if you look at, just look at the domestic institutional investor data, they've been buying consecutively for the last 11 days. But on the flip side, the FIIs has been a little bit wishy-washy. Uh, what's your sense of which way things could head in terms of the money flow into India? Do you think the large chunk of it will still be domestic money? See, FIs have their own compulsion, right? For them, the world is their playground. It's not just India. Although uh, I feel the interest on India is extremely high, but when they just look at India from a global lens, from a valuation lens, India just seems more expensive. However, there are very, very few markets or none which offer this kind of growth runway. 
over the next few years the kind of uh, balance sheet that the country has uh, you know able to de develop and the kind of visibility that you have on corporates right so my sense is look uh, eventually fis will come in uh, i mean they are also uh, driven by rates globally uh, i mean right now there is a china trade going on because china relatively seems extremely cheap so there is a contrarian trade going on so i feel that fis will 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 come in at some point in time uh, however having said that the retail fro continues to be extremely strong and like i said you know if you look at just the wealth that is sitting with the top 40000 ultra hni households is about a, a, a trillion and a half right if you go down one step uh, further uh, you know about 800 uh, about 360 billion dollars is sitting with about 2 lakh households and if you go one more step downwards about 800 billion dollars is sitting there right and a lot of this wealth that has got created for promoters is no longer paper wealth. If you look at the number of block deals that are happening, right, and we just did some estimation that what is the potential block deal size over the next few years. And it could be as high as 15, 20 lakh crores. And what is happening is once the block deals happen, a lot of these promoters are creating their own family offices. And part of that allocation is going back to equities through wealth managers like us. So I think the domestic flow continues to be strong. I only dread to think if FIs also turn positive and they start coming into India, it is going to be a very, very crowded trade. So whilst, you know, what Gautam is saying is absolutely right, that valuations look extended in certain parts of the market. However, uh, you know, with this kind of an optimism and flow, um, you know, I would believe that valuations, even if they get slightly cheaper, the buying interest will come in in a very big way from FIs and domestics continue to be consistent buyers and I think the SIP is the best part of this entire story because people who are coming into the market regularly, right? SIP has grown at 28% per annum, by the way, over the last 5-6 years, right? And this is, this is uh, capital that is making IRRs on a regular basis, right? So I think the domestic investor story looks extremely strong and FIs, I believe it's a matter of time and whenever they're comfortable with valuations or whenever they are comfortable with the relative interest rate trade, uh, they will definitely come in. But at that point in time, it's going to become a very, very crowded trade. These are staggering numbers, uh, Ashish. 40,000 ultra HNIs are sitting with a wealth of 1.5 trillion, $36 billion with 2 lakh households in India. And I think the potential block deals, you know, and this uh, 15 to 20 lakh crore of potential block deals, this is over the next 12 months? Uh, over the next three to four years, I mean, potentially how much the, uh, the promoters need to dilute because there have been a lot of IPOs that have happened, right? And a lot of these IPOs, uh, you know, you offer 10%, 15%, but eventually you have to go down to 75 to meet the SEBI norm. And a lot of uh, companies, you've seen the market caps go up 4, 5, 6x over the last uh, two to three years. And a lot of these promoters are thinking of taking some money off the table and like Gautam said, I think uh, the first thing that a lot of people love to do is buy a large house. So we see traction in the luxury real estate market as well. But after doing that, you know, all of them want to create a family office and look at allocating this money back into financial markets. Okay, well, Gautam, Ajay and Ashish, thanks a lot for joining us and speaking to us about everything related to the markets as well as the retail sentiment and your conference. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you so much for uh, being with us on the channel. Well, with that, it is a wrap on Trading Hour, but stay tuned. Halftime Report is up next.